This video is a companion piece to my main Seabird mixed media tutorial. In this video I'm going to demonstrate a simplified version of the project for junior years. The link to the full classroom workbook for this project is in the description below. In it is this project with instructions and pictures, as well as related drawing worksheets, reference images of seabirds, and these colour mixing worksheets that explore in more detail how to create a range of refined colours from school grade acrylic paints. Also in the description is the link to the main seabird video, plus a link to the colour mixing video if you're super keen. To start you need to draw a seabird. The best way to do this is to break the shape of the bird into basic shapes. All of these seabirds I'm going to draw start out as circles, ovals and triangles. Here's a small circle for the head, then an oval for the neck, then a large oval for the body and a triangle for the tail. Now that you have the basic body shape, you can sketch a line around the edge to join all the shapes together and to make it look like a bird. Then you can add the smaller features like the beak, which is basically another triangle coming out from the head. And then two sticks for legs. When you're adding these bits, look to other parts of the bird to work out where they go. So to place these legs, I can see that they almost line up with the position of the head. You can use this technique of simplifying things into basic shapes for pretty much anything you want to draw. There's more images of seabirds in the workbook. They also have a grid overlay and matching blank grid if you want to do a really accurate representational drawing. Or you might like to research your own images to draw from. So now that I have my basic bird shape drawn, I'm going to stop drawing and add some acrylic paint. Because this is a grey and white seagull, I've mixed some white and black to make a light grey, a medium grey and a dark grey. Taking a wide brush, you're going to paint three lines of grey over the body of the bird. Load the brush up with lots of light grey. Then, starting at the top, paint a swoosh from the head, down the neck and under the body. Now load up the brush with the medium grey. You don't need to wash the brush in between. And then paint another swoosh in the middle of the body. And finally paint some stripes of dark grey on the tail. Then leave it to dry. While the bird is drying, you can make some textured tissue paper to use as an accent on the final piece. To do this, you need to paint some black acrylic paint onto a smooth surface. I'm using a piece of Perspex. Brush the paint on quite thickly. Next, take a piece of lightly scrunched kitchen foil and press it into the paint. Then take a sheet of white tissue paper and press the painted foil strip onto it. Repeat that a few times. Re-scrunch the foil, press it back into the paint and then onto the tissue. Then leave that to dry. Once your painted bird has dried, you need to re-sketch the bird back on. So for this you use the same technique of drawing the circle for a head, an oval for the neck and body and a triangle for the tail. Try not to press too hard with your pencil because you'll need to erase these lines. Then outline the bird. I'm gluing a piece of torn yellow tissue paper to the beak area. It doesn't have to be exactly the right size and shape because there will be paint around the bird. Now outline the bird and add the eye and beak with a fine liner. In this next step, I'm going to use a silk screen stencil technique. If you don't have a silk screen, or this might just be a bridge too far for you, skip ahead to this timestamp for a simpler technique in which I simply cut out and collage the bird. To make the stencil for the silk screen, you need a copy of the bird. The copy needs to be cut out neatly around the edge.
Now tear up some scrap paper and arrange it along the bottom of the page so that it looks like rocks. Then tear some masking tape into strips like this. Make sure the copy of the bird is positioned exactly over the original painting and the rocks are just below so the bird legs will reach them. The masking tape strip will be the bird's legs. Stick the strips to where the legs would be, joining the copy of the bird and the rocks to the page. So this tape will mask out the legs of the birds and also hold the stencils in place. Place some strips of paper around the border to mask the edges. Position the silk screen in place and spoon some blue acrylic paint along the top. I made this shade of blue using cool blue, burnt sienna and grey. If you're interested in how to create a broader and more subtle range of blues from classroom acrylics, you can check out my video on the subject or have a go at filling in these colour mixing worksheets which are in the workbook. Then use a squeegee to pull the paint through the screen. You may need to do a few passes to get the paint to cover all over. Then lift up the screen and carefully remove the stencil pieces, lifting those little pieces of tape as well. You may need an extra set of helping hands for this step. The reason I'm using a silk screen is so that the image is all in one piece and the bird and the background are seamlessly joined. But as I mentioned, I've included an easier option that doesn't require a screen. Once the painted sky has dried, you can fill in the rocks. I'm using some black, yellow and brown coloured inks and a watery wash. But there's a number of art materials you could use here. Watercolours or watercolour pencils could work, even watercolour crayons. It's really up to you, but see if you can find a medium that contrasts with the flat, even blue of that painted sky. Speaking of adding contrasts, it's now time to use that textured tissue we made at the start. I'm tearing it so it looks more natural and organic and contrasts with the cut edge of the bird, but also visually links to the torn edges of the rocks. Tear some of the tissue into strips to look like feathers for the bird. Use some watered down PVA, or even better is paper mache glue, to stick the tissue paper down. Brush more glue over the top to really press the tissue in. Arrange the feathers on one part of the bird as a feature. Don't cover the whole thing up because we want to see those large grey brush strokes as well. And then with the leftover pieces of tissue, arrange some pieces amongst the rocks below and stick them down in the same way. This will create an interesting contrast with that grey watery wash underneath, but also provides a visual link to the bird's feathers and helps the eye to travel around the image. Once the whole thing is dry, you can draw in the bird legs. I'm using a coloured pencil and a fine liner for this. Tear some scrap paper to form a rocky edge. Place it along the bottom of a blank page and use a sponge roller or a large brush to paint from the stencil up the page. Make sure you roll or brush always from the stencil up 
so no paint goes under the stencil. Remove the stencil to reveal the rocky edge, then leave it to dry. Now you need to neatly cut out your bird. Now to add the textured tissue paper to the rocks. Like in the previous project, I've added a watery grey ink wash to the rocks and let it dry. Tear the tissue into pieces and arrange it along the bottom. Use watered down PVA or paper mache glue to stick the tissue down. Then glue the cut out bird to the top section. Make sure you position the bird so that its legs will reach the rocks. Use the leftover pieces of tissue to tear some feather shapes and add them as a feature to the bird's wings. For the legs of this bird, I coloured in a scrap of white tissue paper with a coloured pencil and tore it into leg shapes. And that's it. As you can see, there's quite a few steps in this project, so it won't happen in one sitting. But each step is quite important to the overall success of this piece. So, a bit of patience and a bit of effort will yield rewards in the end.